We wake up this morning to uh, still some heavy rains associated with Fran. It has moved onshore now, but nevertheless, as it uh, continues to move inland, it brings with it all of its tropical moisture. You can see the eye of the storm about 12 hours ago as it came on shore the southern coast here of North Carolina. Now all the rain moving into central Virginia. We've already had reports of anywhere from 10 to 15 inches of rain north and south Carolina, and an additional 6 to 10 inches are possible as it moves into southern Virginia, or should I say southern Pennsylvania, thus flood watches have been issued. Closer inspection, the center is now about 25 miles north-northwest of Raleigh, so you can see the center is right about here, and it is mainly north of the center that we have the heaviest rains this morning. North and South Dakota run Bismarck. Thanks for joining us on the Weather Channel. Here is the very latest on Fran. It is centered about 25 miles northwest of uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, north-northwest of Raleigh in North Carolina. Winds down to 65 miles an hour, so you know that it is no longer a hurricane. It is now a tropical storm. The pressure has risen to 980 millibars, and Fran is expected to continue to weaken as it is no longer over open waters. It has moved inland, and so we uh, lose a lot of uh, tropical, uh, the uh, warm waters anyway, which is something that uh, tropical systems need in order to continue to strengthen. And now that it has lost its source of moisture or source of energy, it has moved inland, so it will continue to weaken. But a uh, main threat will be the very heavy rains and tropical moisture associated with it that it has moved inland. Flooding will be our uh, problem over the next couple of days inland now. You can see Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina is here and uh, the center is uh, just to the north, northwest, but you can see it is mainly north of the center that we have the heaviest rains this morning. The northern parts of North Carolina moving into Virginia here, but once the storm came on shore last night as a hurricane, of course, with winds up to 115 miles an hour, uh, extremely high storm surges. We had reports of very, very gusty winds. Winds were gusting in excess of 120 miles an hour. Some uh, reports buoy data, uh, buoy data off of the uh, coast of North Carolina anyway. But very, very heavy rains. These uh, pinks here indicative of as much as 10 to 15 inches we've had as the tropical moisture from Fran uh, developed and uh, just uh, lingered along the coast here as a storm came on shore. This is the border of North and South Carolina. Again, so we have had torrential rains so far with this hurricane just as we expected.
Now let's get a different vantage point of the radar. And actually this radar is quite interesting because it takes you back about 12 hours or so and you can actually see the eye of the storm as it was just off the coast here of North Carolina. As it came inland, it uh, basically came on shore just downstream from Wilmington, North Carolina and then rapidly moved inland. You can see that the eye is uh, very ragged now. And a lot of times actually with uh, landfalling hurricanes, you talk about low level shear and the uh, threat of tornadic activity, a tornado watch has been issued for this region because of the very heavy rains and the embedded storms and the result of this landfalling hurricane. Now as it continues to move to the north as we go through time, not only are we dealing with flooding problems from the moisture associated with Fran, but also the orographic, um, the orographic lifting means that the showers will be even more enhanced. You know, you have the Appalachian Mountains here, so that will let us uh, lift the air even more so. So that will even create more problems. And flood watches, again, have been issued for a good part of Virginia, North Carolina, and even the state of West Virginia. So we'll keep you posted as the heavy rains, an additional six to 10 inches are possible as Fran has already moved on shore now. Now it is about 25 miles north-northwest of Raleigh and Durham, and we think it will continue to move north as we go through time. Not only are we dealing with Fran and a severe thunderstorm or tornado watch here for the uh, eastern parts of Virginia and the extreme northeastern parts of North Carolina and the Outer Banks, but also there is a threat of thunderstorms across the plains here as we watch a surface cold front move through the region. We'll keep you posted on the progression of Fran as a matter Matter of fact, uh, the projected forecast of Fran has been provided to us by the National Hurricane Center. So whenever you see tropical storm or hurricane uh, forecast positions on the Weather Channel, you need to know that they were provided by the National Hurricane Center. Now the National Hurricane Center says that Fran will continue to move to the north. You can see this is a tropical storm symbol as the hold here is um, clear. If it was a hurricane, it would be filled in. But nevertheless, this um, tropical storm will continue to move northward, eventually changing into a tropical low. But again, all of its moisture will be pushing uh, northward. So heavy rains over the Appalachians, then moving into Pennsylvania and the southern and western parts of the state of New York. At the same time, our cold front now moving across the western high plains, it may bring some uh, heavy rains with some of the heavier downpours here, as much as one half of an inch to an inch, the western parts of Nebraska and northeastern Colorado. But the main story, I think, with this cold front will be the colder air behind it. Look at the highs we're expecting today, 60s over Montana and Wyoming, so much, much cooler behind our surface front over the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures will be in the 70s over parts of the uh, central Appalachians here and the northern Appalachians because of Fran and its moisture. So the clouds and the rain will keep temperatures in the 70s. Overnight temperatures, 30s and 40s behind our surface cold front. That's what we've seen even this morning. So another moisture will be feeding northward. Six to 10 inches are possible today right in this region. And as it continues to move north, we'll find the heavy tropical rains over Pennsylvania and New York tomorrow. Now you know it has been previous um, uh, systems that we've had to deal with uh, tropical moisture over the northeast. Bertha brought a lot of its tropical moisture. So, so far this year we're running above normal in terms of uh, rainfall totals over much of the northeast. So the moisture from Fran will just make matters worse. That's why those flood watches have been issued. I'm sure they'll be extended even northward as uh, we go through the weekend, as you see the rain moving into Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. At the same time, our surface cold front now by Sunday will move toward Chicago, bringing the chance of showers and Detroit. Monday, look at this. Not only have we seen the tropical moisture from Fran, but by Monday, more rains will be moving into the northeast with our surface cold front. So really some big problems over the northeast as we go through the Willie Tynan in Myrtle Beach with the very latest on conditions right now along the Carolina coast. Good morning, Cecily.
Well, good morning, Anita. Uh, we've been driving around for about the past two hours this morning surveying damage. We're kind of getting a glimpse of it before most of the residents do because they did evacuate. The mandatory curfew is still underway. It's expected to be lifted later on this morning when residents will be able to take a look at the damage. And driving around, I have to uh, admit, it's really not that bad. We've also talked to some of the police authorities, and they're all breathing a sigh of relief. The most damage we found was the steeple of a Baptist church was, that was blown off by the wind. And the winds did get strong last night. Uh, last night, some of the video shows that it got very intense around 7 o'clock. The weather really began getting violent. Uh, winds reached tropical storm force uh, strength by then. And then in about two hours, they were topping hurricane strength. Also, very heavy rain. A flash flood watch was in effect throughout the night. It got about six inches of rain. The timing of Hurricane Fran actually proved beneficial to Myrtle Beach uh, since it hit a little earlier than initially expected since it picked up the steam in the Gulf Stream. It hit when the tide was relatively low. High tide was about 3 o'clock this morning. And when we were driving around, we did see some flooded roads. Uh, there's still some power out sporadically. Every once in a while, you see what appears to be lightning, but it's a transformer blowing. But for the most part, everyone here says that the prayers have been answered, that in Myrtle Beach, the life will be getting back to normal very quickly. And once people can uh, return to their homes and pick up some of the minor damage, uh, things will be moving on and, and everyone's kind of breathing a sigh of relief right now. I'm Cecily Tana reporting live from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. All right. Thank you, Cecily. 541 the time now. Let's check back in with Dave Frankel to see if we can expect any frandemonium here in the Delaware Valley, Dave. <laughs> Oh boy. Absolutely, we can. Yes, we can. Uh, bad puns notwithstanding, we are going to have some rain and some wind as we go uh, through the day today. There it is. There's the storm, tropical storm now, uh, just northwest of Raleigh, North Carolina. Let's show you again on the satellite picture. It is tropical storm Fran, 25 miles north-northwest of Raleigh as of the last official posting, which was about 40 minutes ago. Winds now down to 65 miles an hour, so it's lost uh, almost half of its uh, wind speed, moving to the north-northwest at 17 miles an hour, which should bring it up somewhere probably uh, into central Pennsylvania uh, later tonight and tomorrow as the most likely spot with, again, a window on either side of it, but uh, most likely somewhere in central Pennsylvania. We're going to show you the uh, radar picture right now, and as we set this in motion, you will see that over the past six hours, the storm is just spinning its way up through the Carolinas and now into Virginia, and those bands of rain, the heavy bands of rain with the yellows and the oranges and the reds, uh, will spin through our area. So we could see some heavy rain later on today and into tonight and tomorrow. So the call from AccuWeather, well, it's uh, our turn now as Fran continues to move to the north-northwest. 87 warm degrees yesterday. We were in that tropical air mass. We'll stay tropical today, very muggy, not quite as warm, 82 degrees with the rain moving in later on. Let's go live on Sky 6 down to the shore and let's check those numbers for you. Right now, 72 degrees, the relative humidity 90%. Barometer is steady, 30.04 inches. Wind coming right off the ocean at 12 and 77 is the warm ocean temperature. Here at the station, we have 70 degrees, 70 in the northeast, 70 in Camden. The exclusive AccuWeather five-day forecast. Rain and wind combined somewhere between, oh, 10 and 20 miles an hour today, gusting as high as 40 plus later tonight and tomorrow. 82 the high, 72 the low, some thunderstorms possible. More rain and wind as we go into the day tomorrow, 80 degrees. Could clear out by the end of the day tomorrow. But still a lot of clouds around on Sunday. If they're not from the hurricane, the tropical storm now, uh, there's a little backdoor cold front. So either way, Sunday looks sort of iffy, 80 degrees. Shower left over on Monday, and it looks like Tuesday, finally, before we really clear out, dry out, partly sunny skies.